All right, guys, Steve Stratton here, Redline Emissions Products. Today, we are looking at the filter therm inspection table slash cart. It's a compact design to the filter therm's original inspection table. It's much shorter, yet it packs the same punch. It allows us to do a lot of the same things, only now it's more compact and more user-friendly. All right, guys, so in the DPF cleaning industry, we need to know a few things. Number one, we need to know what does the filter weigh? During the cleaning process, we need to know what does the filter weigh, number one. Number two, what is the restriction? What is the flow reading? Number three, are there any visible cracks? We're going to use a light detection for that. And then number four, does it have hard ass centering? Does it have hard packing? What's inside the filter? We're going to use the wire test for that, or pin drop test, some people call it. Filter Therms Inspection Table puts all that in one package. We have an auto calibrating scale, a digital display, we have uh, the flow chamber, which operates on the industry standard flow rates. And we have conveniently located the wire test rods for the pin drop, all in one small, compact package. So when we get started, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how this machine works, how to turn it on, how to inspect a filter, weigh a filter, wire test the filter, flow test, and do a light detection test all in one. All right, everybody, a couple things with the filter therm inspection table. Some of the things you're going to get, they're included with the purchase. Number one, you're going to get the owner's manual, operation and maintenance manual. You're going to get a couple adapter rings. It's going to allow you to adapt for multiple size filters, eight and a half inch filter, all the way up to a 12 inch filter. You're going to get a calibration flow plate. Just in case your machine gets out of calibration, which sometimes they do, you're going to have the ability to calibrate that machine in-house. You don't have to send it out for those kinds of services. So let's get started. Here's how the machine works. The machine is touchscreen. It operates on 110 volt power or 208, depending on what you order. Uh, most common is going to be 110. So we'll turn the machine on using the green button. We'll shut the machine off using the red button, and that is our main power. When we power it on, our machine is touchscreen. The backsplash is going to load, and it's automatically going to calibrate the scale. The scale, again, is auto-calibrating, so we'll let it do its thing, let it warm up. If you power the machine on and it's reading a number that's not zero when it's unloaded, simply zero the scale. It's going to auto-zero. It should auto-zero, but if it's not, simply press zero. Load the filter onto the machine. Record the weight. Switching from flow to weight is very simple. Simply tab the flow button. It changes and shows us a flow restriction reading and it gives us our fan icon and our light icon. The fan icon is for flow restriction, reading the flow rates. The light icon is for reading the crack detection. The light is inside the flow chamber, so what we will do is place the filter over the open port of the flow chamber press that light button, do our light detection test. Once we've done our light detection te test, we've determined that that filter is not cracked or it is cracked. If it is, replace it. If it is not, move on to the flow test. Filter in the same orientation, simply touch the fan icon. It's gonna pull a restriction value. You'll go to your filter therm flow chart and verify where that filter is in the flow charts spec, if you will. Every filter is a little bit different. If you find a filter that is not in the filter therm flow chart, reach out to filter therm and they will give you some support, get you those particular flow rates. Not every filter's flow rate is on the chart. However, we do have most of them. So that being said, it is very straightforward. Simply touch screen, touch the light. It powers on the light for crack detection. Touch it again, shut it off. Touch the light, the fan rather. The fan icon again powers on the, the fan for our flow restriction. Every filter therm machine should be calibrated to 2.5, 2.4 to 2.5 inches of water brand new with the flow calibration plate on it. So if you want to check your machine and verify that it's reading properly, simply install the flow plate, power on the blower. What is it reading? If it's not reading, 
2.4, 2.5 inches of water. There's a, a calibration chart that comes with the machine with instructions. It'll walk you through making those changes fairly straightforward. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through the inspection tables process, how we use it and what we do like step by step, starting from weighing the filter, wire test, light detection, and then flow test. You guys can't see the display, but we'll work something out. Let me grab a filter. So first thing we're gonna do is set the filter on the table. We need to know the inlet from the outlet of the DPF. To determine that, number one, the inlet should always be dirty, the outlet should always be clean. If the outlet is dirty, something's not quite right, soot's bypassing the filter somewhere, now we need to figure out where. This particular filter, the outlet is clean, the inlet is dirty, so it's not visibly internally compromised. We're still gonna do a light detection test, but for now, we're gonna assume that the brick is not damaged based on the outlet. We know it's the outlet because the orientation. Most filters either have an arrow or they have sensor fittings, sensor bungs. Most sensor bungs are labeled temperature one, temperature two, temperature three, and temperature four. If you have a DPF with an inlet, DPF inlet temp sensor, on the inlet of the DPF, it should be labeled temp two. If it has an outlet temperature sensor, it should be labeled temperature three, and this particular model is labeled that way. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna weigh the filter. We're gonna do that with power on our machine. We're gonna let our scale calibrate and we're going to read the weight. The weights in grams, we record that weight so we can see the before and after weight rating of the DPF so we can see how much ash was removed from the DPF. Ash is comprised of lube oil and fuel additives. So we wanna know is it excess fuel additives or is it lube oil? We can ask our customers, is it burning oil or is it just a fuel additive? Once we've recorded our weight, we're gonna take our wire test rod. We use 030 stainless TIG rod, and this is some manufacturers call it a pin drop test. But what we do first is we insert the rod down into the outlet side of the filter. When we put the rod into the outlet side of the filter, it's gonna tell us how deep our brick is, what dimensions, how far our our rod travels into the filter is gonna tell us how big the brick is. Once we know that, we have a gauge for the inlet side. So we know our wire travels into the filter this far, because that's the bottom. The outlet, the outlet side of the filter should always be unrestricted, so we'll bend this wire test rod, and that's gonna give us our gauge. Now we've got our gauge, we'll take the filter and flip it over. Flip the filter over, it should be the dirty side of the filter. We will insert the wire into the filter in roughly 20, 30 cells. If you find a cell in the filter that is restricted or it's got uh, excess buildup, hard ash centering, you wanna work around that cell and determine how much is actually in there that's restricted, okay? And we'll do that like this. Wire testing the filter is gonna tell us if it has hard packing. Hard ash centering is very difficult to, to remove from a DPF. So what we wanna do is see how much hard ash centering is in, in the filter. In this particular filter, from what I've found so far, it does have hard ash centering and it is one third restricted. Our recommendation is if the filter's flow efficiency is restricted by more than one third, we recommend replacing that filter. The reason we recommend replacing the filter is because of the flow efficiency. If you decrease the engine's ability to flow exhaust, you're gonna increase back pressure, you're gonna increase fuel consumption, you're gonna see lots of forced regions, and that's something we just don't want. So if the filter's restricted by more than one third, we recommend replacing that filter. When you're doing the wire test, there's really three feelings you're gonna find. One is hard crunchy. That's hard ash centering or hard packing. That's where the, the soot or ash, ash rather, 
in the DPF melts and sticks to the substrate's cell wall. That's hard packing. It's either hard packed or it's actually melted internally. If it's melted internally, you should see soot on the outlet side. If it's not melted and it's just hard ash sintering, you should have a clean outlet and a dirty inlet. A good rule of thumb is if it's smoking, it's broken. It should always be dirty on the inlet and clean on the outlet. So we've already determined this particular filter is one-third restricted. When we wire test it and it stops, we take our second measurement, pull it out, and we measure across the brick. If we were to cut this brick into thirds, we would see that it is one-third restricted in most areas across this filter. So this filter is a candidate to be replaced, but for the video, we're going to go ahead and move forward. So now that we've wire tested the filter, now we're going to use the light detection or the crack detection test on the filter. We're going to flip the filter over and place it on top of the flow chamber. Once the filter is placed on top of the flow chamber, tab or toggle to the light detection tab, turn on the light and take a look. When you're looking into the filter, you should not be able to see through the brick. If you can see through the brick, then you have a bypassing filter. It's either melted or it's actually cracked. If you see light through more than 20 cells, this filter is bad. It needs to be replaced. Now that the flow or the light detection is done, we're going to do a flow test. We'll do a flow test with the filter sitting just where it's at. We will turn on the flow reading. We're going to take that reading and we're going to compare it to the filter therm flow chart. It should be within spec. There's a, re there's a rating for most filters that are on the market. Every filter flows a little bit differently, so you want to make sure that you got the right filter for the, each particular flow number. This particular model um, of DPF, is its flow rate should be right around 2.1 to 2.2 inches of water. So we'll flow test it and see where it's at. The flow rate on this filter here is actually 2.5 inches of water, which means it's outside of its spec. So we found a few things in the process. We found it has hard ass centering in our first step of our process, and it was more than one third, which deemed it failed and needing to be replaced. We did a light test or crack detection test, and we found cracks, or we didn't find cracks, whatever we found. And then we did our flow test, our flow test tells us that the filter is restricted, which coincides with the hard ash centering, which means this filter is in fact restricted, it's compromised, and it is due to be replaced. All of that from a few minutes at a table is fairly straightforward and it's fast and efficient.